All right, guys. I kind of got to confess something that I'm not super proud of. See, this right here is my mobile workbench, and it's something that I use every single day. And as you can see, it is a horrible mess. <laughs> now, this is something that I threw together about a year ago, and I had the intention of making it super functional and adding organization and making it look a lot better than it looks right now. But my problem is I sort of just hop from project to project without ever taking the time to sort of ever finish this thing off and make it look nice. But I got to thinking, and you know what? It is time. So in this video, I'm going to show you everything that I did to this mobile workbench to make it look and function a lot better. So let's get started. guys a little tour of this mobile workbench so you can see just how beautiful it is okay so this is this nice glamorous uh, top here and uh, fun fact this was actually my husband and I it, this was our very first dining room table um, just out of college had no money um, bought this at like I don't know big lots or something like that for like 200 bucks and you know we rocked this thing for several years until I finally got good enough at woodworking, I decided to build a table for ourselves. But anyways, so when I built the new table, I took this table and turned it into sort of this mobile uh, workbench. Um, basically, I just framed it out with some two by fours. I did add um, a couple drawers. So far, as you can see, super, super organized. Um, yeah, that's probably the most organized drawer you've ever seen, right? So anyways, that's one of the things that I wanna fix um, by redoing this is adding better drawers and more organized drawers. Um, this drawer here doesn't even have a drawer front on it yet. That's how um, bad I was that I didn't even take the time to put a drawer front on that. Uh, so like I said, something I'm not proud of. But anyways, that's got some sandpaper in it. Uh, there's a drawer down there that uh, was supposed to be attached. I haven't even attached that and uh, it's just full of junk right now that needs to go somewhere else. So what I wanna do to this is I want to A, make it look a little bit nicer. So basically frame it out better, paint it, um, you know, add drawer slides that look, I mean, drawer fronts that look a little bit better than that. Actually install the drawers onto the mobile workbench so I do have some organization. And then inside the drawers, I want to be able to have the drawers themselves be organized. So I just don't throw stuff inside of a drawer when I'm busy and forget about it and never clean it up. So, and then for the top, I actually got some laminate that I'm going to put on top of that um, to make the top look a little bit better. And as you can see, it's super rough here. I've got glue from where I've glued stuff up. I use this for gluing glue ups a lot. So. Another big benefit of the laminate is going to be so that the glue itself does not stick to the laminate. So I'll be able to use that for glue ups and keep it a lot cleaner. Anyways, that's sort of my overall plan for how I'm going to spice up this mobile workbench, get it a little more functional, get it a little bit more beautiful, and it'll serve me a lot better in the shop. So the very first step that I got to do is I've got to get all this crap cleaned out of here. So I'm going to work on cleaning all that out now. Now I'd already made up the drawers for this workbench since I'd already planned on adding some more drawers. So I had those built already, but I needed to install some drawer slides to the base and get these installed. Now I probably could have fit more drawers, but I was good with just having four for the time being because A, I don't want this workbench to become so heavy from being filled with things that it makes it hard to roll around. And B, I wanted to leave a little space underneath the drawers so that I could store some longer items. I also added a piece of 2x4 to divide the two drawer spaces. Before, I had just a small piece there separating the drawer spaces, so I wanted to beef it up a little bit. To attach those pieces, I used some pocket hole screws, and boy did it pay off to be small installing these since I just crawled inside and got these attached. Oh, 
Oh, looks like I got a job to do. Sometimes I just get so caught up working and my ball throwing duties really suffer. Then I see that face and it makes me think that his patience is something to aspire to. Another plan of mine to add a little more storage to this workbench was to add a shelf that can sit behind two of the drawers. This will give me a place for a few little things that I use frequently. To make the shelf, I just used some 3 quarter inch plywood scrap and I added a backing to it to keep things from sliding off. As I mentioned before earlier in the video, my plan for the top of this workbench was to apply some Formica laminate. In order to get this thing prepped for a new top, I took it outside and worked on sanding off the years worth of glue and paint drips until it was pretty smooth. After sanding, I made sure to give it a good cleaning so as not to trap any of that dust under the new laminate top. Once my top was good and sanded, I figured I would give this thing a little paint to freshen it up a bit. Now this wasn't my most flawless paint job yet, but really the goal was just to make it look a little nicer. If you're wondering about the green color that I chose, well that was paint that I had left over from another project and I was trying to keep this upgrade as cheap as possible, so that was my motivation for choosing it. I gave this thing about 3 good coats and then was ready to move on to the next step. Now this was my first time attaching laminate to anything, so to be honest, I had no idea what I was doing. So what do you do when you don't know what you're doing? You head to YouTube and you watch a ton of videos until you feel slightly more confident about your skills than you might have before. So that's basically what I did. And I came across a video about installing laminate from one of my favorite YouTube creators, Bourbon Moth. He made a really good video about how to install laminate and I was able to use a lot of those tricks when installing it myself. I will give you an idea of what to do in my video, but if you're looking for a really good in-depth video, then I would suggest you check out his video. I will link it below. From watching his video, I learned that a good thing to do when adding laminate is to install some hardwood trim around your surface. So I worked on cutting some 1 inch wide by 3 quarter inch thick strips of ash to trim out my tabletop. Once I got my pieces cut to size, I then attached them to the top itself using some wood glue and brad nails. I made sure to leave them just a little high so that I could come back and sand everything smooth. After a while, I had a whole tabletop completely trimmed out. It's also worth mentioning that if you have an extra set of hands for doing this, it will go so much smoother. Luckily, one of my favorite coworkers, my mom, showed up to assist me with the next few steps. Once all the trim was attached, I worked on sanding everything smooth. Then it was time to get the laminate itself cut to size. Now I would recommend leaving the laminate in its packaging until you're ready to use it. Once you unroll it, it can become quite awkward and hard to manage. After measuring my tabletop, I made sure to add a little extra to each of my sides to make sure I had enough laminate to cover everything. I will trim off the excess later. To cut the laminate, I clamped a straight edge on my mark and then I used a laminate scorer to score a line on the laminate. After doing this several times, we were able to snap the piece off exactly on that line. Now if I could go back and do this part over again, I would have probably worn gloves because that cut laminate edge is sharp. 
I sliced my finger pretty good on it, so uh, wear gloves if you can. On the topic of recommending safety gear, might I also suggest that you wear safety glasses and ear protection because using that laminate score is awfully similar to the whole nails on the chalkboard situation. 10 out of 10 would not recommend to do that without covering your ears. For attaching the laminate to my old tabletop, I use a little something called contact cement. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been around for a while. The way this stuff works is basically you just roll it onto both your old tabletop and the laminate itself, then you let it fully dry. Once it's dry, you then attach the two together and some sort of chemical reaction happens that makes the two stick together. That's about as technical as I can explain it, because to be honest, I don't know exactly how it works, I just know it's science. So I'm good with letting it do its thing. Another little trick I learned from Bourbon Moth is to take a brush after rolling the contact cement on and use it to try and get out the air bubbles before it dries. Next it was time to officially attach the laminate to the tabletop. And to do this, you want to take some scrap pieces of wood or anything that can sort of create a barrier between the two pieces to allow you time to line everything up. Because once those two pieces make contact, they're stuck. Hence the name contact cement. Anyways, you just want to make sure the pieces you use to do this are clean because you don't want things falling off of them that can get stuck in between the laminate and your tabletop. After taking some time to line everything up exactly where I wanted it, I then began by removing my scrap piece in the middle first, then I firmly pressed down in the middle to allow the two to make contact. From there, I would work my way out to each side, removing a piece and then using a roller to put good pressure on the two to make them stick together. Once all of my scrap pieces were removed, I spent a good chunk of time thoroughly rolling over everything to make sure that I had good adhesion. The last thing you want after all of that prep work is to have an area that did not adhere, so I really worked on making sure it was good before moving on. I then let it dry overnight before trimming off my excess. When it came to trimming off the excess, I decided to use a flush trim bit in my palm router and I just ran that ball bearing along the edge of my trim and this actually worked great. I was a little bit worried that this might cause some tear out or chipping but I had a brand new bit in my router so that might have helped prevent that. Once I had the laminate trimmed flush with the edge, I then ran over my edges again, this time with the chamfer bit and chamfered the edges just slightly to knock down that sharp edge. This really helped tie the two together and make it feel like a finished top. I also decided to just leave the ash natural rather than paint it, so with that, the top was officially finished. One of the biggest problems with the workbench before was the lack of organization. One place that really rang true was in my sandpaper drawer. To fix this issue, I decided to throw together a bit of a storage bin for each grit of sandpaper so that I can keep it better organized. To do this, I laid out my sandpaper and then used some CA glue with some leftover plywood and made cubbies for each grit.
And to really keep things organized, I labeled each cubby with the corresponding grit. My hope is that when I'm done using sandpaper or switching between grits, then I'll have a designated place that I can pull from and put back. I guess I'll have to wait and see if I actually use it properly, but hey, at least I set myself up for success by making it. The last thing this upgraded mobile workbench needed was something that the previous version lacked dearly, and that was some actual cabinet doors and drawer fronts. Even though it's just a workbench and it lives in the shop, there's no reason that it can't look nice, right? At least I'll feel better about the way it looks. Now to make these drawer fronts and doors, I used my router table using rail and style bits. I had four drawer fronts and two cabinet doors to make, so that meant a lot of pieces to keep up with. I used the Cutlass Calculator on OptiCutter.com to make sure I was efficient with my cuts and to keep track of everything. Then it was just a matter of running all of my rail and style pieces through my router table. Once all those pieces had been run through the router table, I just had to cut down some center panels out of some quarter inch plywood and then everything would be ready for assembly. After letting the glue dry, I sanded all of my doors and drawer fronts and then gave them all a couple of coats of paint. <music> Lastly, I just had to get these drawer fronts and doors installed onto my workbench. To install the drawer fronts, I went ahead and drilled holes where my drawer poles were going to go. And then I ran some screws through the drawer front into the drawer to hold the drawer front in place while I attached it to the drawer with some screws from the other side. Gosh, I just realized how many times I said drawer in that sentence. Anyways, once I had the drawer front on, then I attached the drawer pull. Really, way too many times saying drawers. Anyways, once I had one attached, I repeated the same steps for the other three. To attach the cabinet doors, I simply used some flush mounted hinges. I figured there was no need to get fancy and these were just super easy to install. And hey, don't judge me for not painting the interior panel of these cabinet doors. 
It just didn't feel necessary since I'm probably the only person that will ever see them. So I told myself, Ain't nobody got time for that! So I decided to just leave them like they are. To attach these doors, all I had to do was get them lined up where I wanted them and sink some screws into the workbench through the hinges. After they were attached, I added a few cabinet knobs that I had, and with that, this workbench was pretty much wrapped up. Alright guys, now let's take a look at this first drawer here. Now if you can remember, this was one of the few drawers that I actually had accessible before. And so I sort of just threw everything in here. I mean basically anything that I needed to get off the workbench top itself, I would just put in here and then if I needed to find a pen or my notebook or anything like that, I basically just had to dig through a bunch of junk to be able to find it. So what I've decided to do with this drawer is basically I only want to keep things like this in here, things like my notebooks and sketch pads and pens and calculators, scissors, etc. Uh, small things like that I want to keep in here and I don't really want to add too much else to this. That way um, when I need to access one of these things, which is something that I access on a pretty frequently basis, um, I want to be able to get to these easier and see now that I have multiple drawers uh, to store things in, uh, it's a lot easier to sort of keep just these things in here because I've got other places that I can store those other things in though. So I'm really happy with how this uh, sort of turned out and how I was able to like organize it a little bit better. So let's move on to the next drawer guys. Okay, so this was one of the drawers that I think needed the most work. Um, before, I just had a giant pile of sandpaper in here. Uh, basically, when I would change grits um, on my orbital sander, I would just throw it in here because um, I knew I wanted to use it later, but I didn't have any sort of organization to keep the different grits separated, so I would just search through each piece to try to figure out what grit it is. And you know, after you use uh, something for a while, you know, this little thing that shows you what grit on the back, that starts to sort of fade and then it just became difficult to keep track of what was what grit. So to me personally, this is something that I think will be really good for me because now when I'm switching out grits, uh, I'll have a designated space that I can put it back in and grab from. I've got everything labeled here, so that's gonna help me keep everything straight I hope and um, also got a little section back here for some hand sanding uh, accessories, some sanding blocks, uh, I've got some you know finer detail sanding um, tools and then you know if I basically if I fold pieces of sandpaper and I still want to use them later I've got you know a space that I can keep some of those so I think that this is going to be really beneficial for me and I'm really happy to have a little bit better organization for this drawer. Okay let's move on to the next one. Alright guys so in this drawer basically uh, I just have a designated section where I can store all my PPE um, this is something that I definitely needed. If you can remember before, this was just basically an open space that I would just throw a, whatever, um, again, just to get it out of the way. 
um, but I really desperately needed a one place that I could store all of my safety glasses. Uh, I've got my respirator in here, another little dust mask. I've got my uh, ear protection here. Um, and then I also just have some extra filters and stuff for my respirator. So this is something that I'm super happy to have. I think it's gonna serve me really well in the future. All right, let's move on to the last drawer. All right, this last drawer, I'm sort of calling my mixed bag drawer because there's a lot of just random things in here, but you know, it's things that I use on a pretty frequent basis. So um, it gives me a place to store some of these smaller items that, you know, I don't want to have on a shelf and I can kind of keep it close by. Um, you know, I've got some right angle clamping squares in here. I've got some of my black diamond pigments, some epoxy accessories. Um, you know, a moisture meter, a label maker, a laser level, some, you know, tape, all kinds of things in here. I've got some wood veneer, um, edge banding. So this is just the place that I can keep, you know, a few odds and ends in, but kind of keep them rather than before I had them just sitting on a shelf in here, I kind of keep them in one designated area. So, you know, this is something that I can add to. I want to try to keep it somewhat organized, but, um, you know, it gives me a little bit of space. If I have something random that I need to store in my workbench, I've got a space that I can do that. All right, and that's going to wrap up the drawers. Let me show you the backside for the doors. All right, so let's take a look at sort of what I have behind these doors here. On this side here, you can see where I put it in the shelf here. I've got some things that I use on a pretty regular basis. Uh, lots of different wood fillers here that I use, some wood biscuits, uh, some wood plugs and shims, a couple uh, new blades for my jigsaw, and a uh, push, pusher for my table saw, uh, push block, and uh, also have uh, my palm router, which is something that I use pretty much all the time. Underneath the shelf, uh, also I've got room if I needed some longer items I could slide underneath the drawers themselves. For now I've got things like my biscuit joiner and belt sander and some gloves that I keep under there. So that pretty much wraps up this side. Now over here on this side um, I've got a little bit taller space I decided not to put a shelf in um, because these drawers on this side actually do come a little bit deeper. So for now I've just got some things like my nail gun, uh, my pocket hole jig, and then I've got a cushion for these old knees. And like I said, I've got a little bit taller storage here. If I do have some taller items I need to store in the future, I have room that I can do that. A little bit more room to grow here if I do want to add a shelf, but that's what I got in there for right now. Um, and I think having these doors, uh, I really like to be able to close off the space, not have it be open and just collecting more dust. And so super happy with how this turned out. All right guys, that is a wrap on this mobile workbench upgrade. Now this might not be the most beautiful thing I've ever made, but it was completely necessary. This workbench had sort of just gotten away from me and the more projects I took on, the messier it got. Um, so I'm super happy to A, be able to make it look a little bit nicer now and B, have it be a little bit more functional and help me stay organized. We'll see how organized I stay, check in in the next six months and see if I was able to keep this thing organized. But I really hope so and I think I've sort of set myself up to have that happen. Alright guys, if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I've got tons of projects in the works and you're not going to want to miss them. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I really appreciate it. I'll see you all again soon for my next video. Bye.